Right, the cardiovascular system. We will talk about five main parts of the cardiovascular system and describe their function. We'll describe two types of circulation in the blood and body and list four cardiovascular problems as well as discuss blood. So your cardiovascular system consists of or is made of the heart and the blood vessels that carry blood throughout your body. The heart and blood vessels that carry blood throughout your body. Okay, there's three types of blood vessels. You can list this under number two. The arteries, capillaries, and veins. So you can just list that. Arteries, capillaries, and veins. They carry blood pumped um, by the heart. Hey, the heart, discuss that here, is a cardiac muscle or made of cardiac muscle. It is an organ made mostly of cardiac muscle. It is about the size of your fist and it is almost in the center of your chest cavity. It's, um, it's just slanted a little bit toward your left. So it's in the middle, slanted a little bit toward your left, about the size of your fist. And notice that it points down at the bottom. And you can see here, there's some thick layers. Um, I'll kind of outline them here. Um, actually, I'll shade it in red. Well, this part that's in peach, that's all muscle tissue. Notice how that muscle tissue is not the same thickness throughout the whole heart. Also notice you have a left and right side. Um, and it's not your left and right as you look at it. It's your left and right if it's in your heart. So if this was my heart, this would be my right. And, uh, um, or you can think about it as it being in your body. The Which side is thicker, the right or the left side? The left side is thicker. Does anybody know why? I don't, I don't assume that you would. If the left side is pumping blood out to the rest of your body, whereas the right side is only pumping blood to your lungs. And your lungs are going to sit back behind your heart. So your the left or the right side goes to your lungs, which isn't very far away. It doesn't have far to go. And then blood comes back in from your lungs and it goes to the left side. Your left side then delivers it to the rest of your body. So the muscles on the left side are thicker because they have to be stronger because they have to pump harder than the right side. Um, that's why when you actually hear a heart beat, it makes the sound that we, in science, we, we say lubbed up, lubbed up, lubbed up, lubbed up. Um, and the reason it's not just dub dub, like it's not the same. Is partially because that one side is stronger. Um, and in fact, it's not actually the, the heart beating that makes that noise at all. There's, do you see those valves in the picture? Those valves open and they snap shut. Um, when they snap shut, that's the noise you hear. Um, they, they have to, they stay shut so blood doesn't just drip down from the right atrium to the right ventricle or from the left atrium to the left ventricle, they stay shut to keep the blood in there until it has to go to the next chamber. Um, so those, those valves open and shut and then it'll snap shut and that's what you hear uh, when you hear a heart sound. Okay, so we'll go into this in more detail. Um, and this is actually part of your homework if you worked ahead. I know some of you have already seen this. Um, and this is in your textbook. But there's a few things going on here. So we'll look at one and then two and then three. So the first thing that blood do, does is it comes into your heart. Blood enters uh, first through the, into the right atrium and the left atrium. And you know what? I'm actually going to discuss it differently than that because that's kind of confusing. We'll just go through it in, in order. So let me get, um, let's use my red pen here still. So blood comes in the right atrium. So this, well, first of all, I should back up. 
You notice that there's four chambers. There's, this is, that was a bad color to choose. There's the, that is a bad color. Okay, the right atrium. There's the right, there's something else. The right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. So do you guys see those four chambers? Okay, so first blood enters into the right atrium. It comes from two places. There's this blood vessel here on top called the superior vena cava. It's a vein. You notice it's blue? It's a vein. Well, that's how I think it's your atrium. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a vein. Um, and then the inferior vena cava comes here. So any blood from the top half of your body, like above your heart, comes in through the superior vena cava. Anywhere from below your heart comes up through the inferior vena cava into that atrium. And then that blood travels down through this first valve into the right ventricle. So the two bottom chambers are called ventricles. The two top chambers are atria. Then your blood goes up um, out of the left ventricle, right ventricle, sorry, and it goes out to your lungs. So it leaves your heart and goes to your lungs. What is your blood doing in your lungs? Alex? It gets oxygen. Somebody else, what does it drop? drop uh, what does it dump off there? Just say it. Tell me, raise your hand, tell me. You know what it is. If it gets oxygen, the Owen? If it's getting oxygen from the lungs, what is it delivering to the lungs that you breathe out? Grace? Carbon dioxide. So remember, carbon dioxide is a byproduct of cellular respiration. Um, so your lungs are going to, uh, or your blood gets that from cellular, from your cells, and then your blood vessel transports to your heart, pumps it out to your lungs, so you can breathe it out. And then the oxygen that you breathe in comes into the heart, and now it comes into your heart from your lungs over here on the left atrium and then it goes down into the left ventricle and then it gets pushed out through this vessel here this is called the aorta and from the aorta that blood goes to your body okay um let's look at that again here Okay, the blood vessels. The arteries are blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart and to the body's organs. They're blood vessels that carry blood. You need to write this next to number two, right? Three. Three. Blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart to the organs. You might want to underline the word away. Um, away starts with the letter A. Artery starts with the letter A. All but a couple of the arteries, the ones in your heart, are red because uh, they have, they're oxygenated. If they're going to your body, they should be full of oxygen because they just came from the heart. So your arteries are usually red, especially in diagrams, to indicate that they are full of oxygen. Um, you know, veins is next, however, they're, they're, the, art, the blood vessels start as arteries, then they turn into capillaries, and then they turn into veins. So it's actually like this highway system, like a big loop. Um, so a capillary are tiny, microscopic blood vessels that carry blood to cells. So they have to go to your cells. Think about the cells, how small they are. Capillaries go and exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide and nutrients and water to and from your cells. 
The veins are blood vessels that carry blood back to the heart. Veins carry blood back to the heart. Um, and there's two types of circulation. Because blood is being pumped to the lungs and back to the heart and back to the lungs and back to the heart, that's called pulmonary circulation. If you ever hear pulmonary, that means the lungs. So pulmonary circulation is blood flow from the heart to the lungs um, and from the heart to the lungs from the heart to the lungs. The other type that you have a picture of is called systemic circulation. Is the flow of blood back to the heart. Well, actually, your, your, your picture is both of them, doesn't it? So the top part of your picture is pulmonary. The bottom part is systemic, and it's, they're both labeled for you. Um, so systemic is to your body system and back to the heart your body system and back to your heart. So pulmonary goes lungs to heart, systemic is body to heart. So here is that picture. And you should have some places that are whited out, some white blocks in there. That's where you need to include these arrows. You need to make sure you copy them in the correct direction because uh, that's how what you're going to use to study off of. Your your notes booklet here is your study guide. Um, if you draw it wrong, you'll study it wrong. Okay? So as you guys are filling that in here, we'll just go over this little loop. And in fact, it is a loop. I could trace it and not pick up my pen. So if we start in the right atrium... Blood goes down through the right atrium to the right ventricle, up to the lungs, out of the heart and to the lungs. And see it turns into capillaries there. That's where the exchange of oxygen, carbon dioxide takes place. Notice in the picture that that area is purple. It's a mix of the red and the blue. And it picks up oxygen, comes back to the heart. Now it's oxygenated. Goes to the left atrium, down to the left ventricle out of the heart through the aorta and it's going to travel to your body all your body parts all of your body parts and then the arteries are going to turn into capillaries so at the cellular level the blood is dropping off oxygen dropping off water it's dropping off nutrients it's picking up carbon dioxide it's picking up waste and then it takes it back up. It's going to stop a few other places along the way, but eventually it makes it back up to the heart, and we finish. So I just did that. It's kind of like the figure eight, isn't it? So it's kind of wonky in the middle. Otherwise, it's kind of like a figure eight. Do you guys have... Okay, cardiovascular problems. This is called atherosclerosis. It's when cholesterol builds up inside the blood vessels, the major cause of heart disease. Because it's, if you've ever heard of the, the bottleneck, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Effect, the bottleneck effect. When all of a sudden maybe, tr well, you probably see it in the hallways. When you go from a wide hallway and you're following a bunch of people and then you go to a narrow hallway where you're walking in from the fire drill and all of a sudden everyone has to go through the doors. It takes a long time to wait for everybody to go through the doors. That's the bottlenose effect. And that's kind of what happens if you have a lot of cholesterol in your body, it will build up in the walls of your blood vessels um, and makes those blood vessels thinner. Or, well, it makes the walls thicker. It makes this area where blood flows smaller. So blood starts to pool up in there and it doesn't go as fast as it should go. And that builds your blood pressure. It raises your blood pressure and makes your heart work harder. Um, that could lead to, lead to heart diseases. Um, and it could also lead to other things, too, because it's taking a long time for blood to get to places it needs to go in your body. Um, so that's atherosclerosis from the cholesterol deposits building up in the blood vessels. High blood pressure. It's called hypertension. It is abnormally high blood pressure. Um, higher, the higher the blood pressure, the greater the risk of heart attack because your blood is, or your heart, it has to work harder 
um, to lead to heart failure, kidney disease, and stroke. So that's why when you go to the doctor, they get your physical, they take your blood pressure. You should take that every time to check that. Um, high blood pressure can be caused by your diet. It might be stress at work or school. Uh, might just be genetics. They can prescribe you something to lower your blood pressure or maybe you start with exercise and a healthy diet. Heart attacks and heart failure. A heart attack happens when the heart muscle cells die and part of the heart muscle is damaged. Um, I'm going to go, no, I can't go backwards, but the, your, on your heart you have tiny little blood vessels and those can get clogged and that could kill cells in your heart and then your heart doesn't pump um, and it stops. So that would be a heart attack. Heart failure would happen when the heart can't pump enough blood to meet the body's needs. Um, there's a lot of things involved with heart and the heart and heart disease. And if uh, Madison and Jason's poster was accurate, they said 31% of deaths are caused by heart disease. Questions on that? Okay, um, what is blood? Blood is, oh wait, you guys have this on the next page in your notes, right? Okay, blood is a connective tissue that carries gases, nutrients, and waste through the body. A connective tissue that carries gases, nutrients, and waste through the body. Um, a lot of people probably, if they aren't educated, just think that blood is a bunch of red blood cells. But it's way more than that. You can see on your notes it includes plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells. It also includes platelets. Um, most of the volume of your blood comes from plasma. Plasma is the fluid part of the blood. Your, those blood cells have to travel through something. So it's a fluid part. It's a mixture of water minerals, nutrients, sugars, proteins, and other substances. Tell me, please, where does your blood pick up water, minerals, nutrients, sugars, and proteins? How do those get into your bloodstream? Madison? By eating. So how does it get from Grace? Yes. The lining, we talked about epithelial cells. I said that one of their functions is absorption. The lining of your stomach and your small intestines and your large intestines is permeable. Things can go in and out. So the food that you digest, digest into microscopic little particles. And those microscopic little particles travel through the wall of, or the walls of your stomach and intestines and into your blood. So that's where it, your blood picks up these these parts of the plasma, okay? That's what travels through there. So your walls of your blood vessels are very thin and they allow this diffusion to take place. This absorption of water, minerals, nutrients, sugars, and proteins. And where's your blood gonna take that to? Your... The C. The cell. Cells. 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 Thanks, Salissa. Gosh, you got it. Good job. The cells. Your blood is going to take all that to your cells. Because we talked about what cells do. They have all these parts that do stuff. They have to get the materials to do their stuff from the blood. And then you have red blood cells, which we call RBCs for short. Most of the blood cells are red blood cells. They carry oxygen to every cell in your body. So write that down next to red blood cells. They take oxygen to every cell in your body. So their function is to carry oxygen. They have this little protein on them called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, you might have heard of that binds to iron and carries oxygen. So if, you're, if your diet is low in iron, then your hemoglobin can't carry oxygen and you get anemic. 
Okay, we'll get to the rest here in a little bit. Wait, probably not here if I go to one more. Platelets is not on your thing. Platelets are pieces of larger cells found in bone marrow, and platelets help your blood clot. You don't have to write that, it's not on there. But platelets help your blood clot. You can see a clot forming right here. It's like a spider web forms in your blood vessel. So you have an injury where you're bleeding, you're bleeding, and bleeding. These platelets come along and they back up and they create these fibers and help stop the bleeding. Um, go to white blood cells. White blood cells. WBCs. They help you be healthy. And they're part of the lymphatic system. They destroy pathogens and help clean wounds. They have a lot of functions. There's like five different types of white blood cells. They are the search and destroyers of the body, the military, the nurses and doctors. Yes. Okay, body temperature regulation. I told you I was going to get to this. Your blood does more than supply your cells with oxygen and nutrients. They help regulate your body temperature. Oh, no picture. That's no fun. So let me just explain that a little bit because I didn't yesterday. Um, so let's say you're a track, at a track meet. It is really, really hot. What color does your skin start to turn? Red. Red. Close your blood. Red. That's because you have those blood vessels in the that fatty tissue, fatty layer of your skin in that hypodermis. And those blood vessels, when you get hot, they dilate. So they get bigger and more blood flows through them. And when they get bigger, they get closer to the surface of your skin. So they're getting bigger, they're getting closer to the surface of your skin, they're allowing more blood to flow through, they're allowing more heat because your blood carries heat. Your body's heat goes into your blood and then that heat now is closer to the surface of your skin, it can radiate out of your skin. So when you get hot, you get red and you can feel heat radiating off of your skin. That's one way of helping you stay cool. Now, if you're really cold, your blood vessels do the opposite. They get smaller or they constrict. They get further away from the surface of your skin. They slow the blood flow to your skin to trap heat inside your body to help keep you warm. Okay, we talked about blood pressure, and here's the definition. is the force exerted by blood on the inside walls of the arteries. is called blood pressure. And lastly, blood types. Um, I'm actually just going to explain. I have these on the board, and we'll go over them. Um, and I have the exact same shapes and everything, but there's four blood types. A, B, A, B, and O. And they have to do with the type of antigens that are on the surface. And it has something to do with blood transfusions. Um, so I'll just show you that.